our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Live in the Word. I'm so glad that you've joined us today to hear what God has to speak to us. Today we want to help continue to build the family strong and we want to look at the role of men in building families. Men, we have a role that God has called for us and it is important for us to understand our role so that we can build our family strong. Join us right now. I want to give you a little advice, man. If you didn't go home for one year, make this your year and go home. Go home for one year and invest in your home. You can't fight no battles until you deal with the battle at home. You, you can't go to it. And God said, who are these men here with us? Whoever's been married in the first year, go home. I know you want to fight for the Lord, but go home. Because the fight's there. The fight's not here. We're fighting this because that's all jacked up. Come on, somebody. Are you following me? Get this, ladies. Mark it down. One year, go home. If you're getting married or you're married, that first year, stay home. Build the principles of God. Build your relationship with God. Build your relationship with your wife. Build your relationship with your children or your children to come. And you watch the dramatic changes that God would do in your home. I guarantee you. If you haven't done that yet... I'm giving you that today to do. Stay home for a year. I know you want to do I know you want to go to the basketball game. I know you want to do all this stuff with the boys. And, 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 no, no, you ain't got time for the boys. You got time for family. And if we're going to build our faith family strong, then we need to put these principles into action in our life and invest in our homes if we want radical change for the glory of God. Amen? So these things are important. So turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Everyone's favorite book. Everyone's favorite book and his greatest chapter of all ever written, chapter 5. Yes, yes, I knew they loved it. Oh, I knew you would love this chapter. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at the 23rd verse here in Ephesians chapter 5. We, we love this book so much you need to lean over and see what it looks like. With the person next to you, if you don't you got your word. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, and the word of God says this. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So in Ephesians, God gives us an example of what family is all about, but he uses an example of what family is all about. It correlates with the church and the kingdom of God. So if we're going to be kingdom men, that we got to live kingdom ways. And that kingdom way starts in my singleness. It starts in my, 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 my married life, in my home. But it also is a part of overall the body that we're all in this morning. It's all a part of the kingdom of God. And God, Jesus uses himself the example of what a good husband is. Isn't that a great example, ladies? Don't you want a Jesus man on your side? And so scripture here, don't reject this. And again, we've been, we've been abused by this verse. Come on, lady, right? Some of us have been in church a long time. And we've been abused by this verse. But if we understand the, the, the purpose of the verse, it is so freeing. Because God is all up in this verse. And when we receive what God has for us, things will be better for us in our lives when we have understanding of what God says. So we need to see and understand that Jesus wants us to understand that men have a position in their lives as the head, as Christ is the head of the church. It's positional. It's a place. If you are the head of state, you are the head over that state, over this governing area that you have rule and reign over. So as the head of my home, I have been given authority to rule and to reign according to the will of God in my home. That's what headship is. Positioning you in the proper place to do things that will advance God's kingdom. 
That's why we need men to take their position in headship. Amen? It's important for us to understand that. So Jesus says in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, he also says the same thing. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. So ladies, don't forget it. The, the, he's saying in Ephesians that man is wife, but he's reminding us that the man's head is Christ. So we're in submission to Christ as you are in submission to your husband. And that could be a great benefit. Amen? So for Christ of the head of woman and the head of Christ is God. Do you see that? That even Christ is submitted? Do you see that? That Christ is submitted to God? Does anyone know who God is submitted to? God is submitted to his word. God is submitted. That's why he's, a, he's not a man that he should lie. Because whatever God says he will do, he's submitted to his word. And because God submitted to his word, Christ is submitted to him because it's true. And as men, we should be submitted to Christ because it's true. And women, we should be submitted to our husbands who are submitted to Christ because why? Because their word is true. Headship in the Bible means that governing authority, right? So we understand that it's a governing authority. That's why Joshua was able to say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't care about your house. He said, for me and my house, I don't know what you're doing, but in this house, we're going to serve God. We're going to live by God's word. I'm going to worship God, and my family's going to follow the things of God, and we're going to live that out in our life. So it's important for us to understand that God gives a, a, an assignment of responsibility. So headship means responsibility. If you want to be the head of something, it's time to take responsibility. Stop advocating your responsibility. I don't care how small the position of headship is, fill out that responsibility. Children, you have a responsibility as a, as a child. Take that responsibility. Wives, you have a responsibility. Husbands, a respons everyone has a responsibility, and we must take that responsibility and the headship of God that he has for us so that we can advance God's kingdom. That's the whole purpose of headship and dominion is for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Not to proclaim that you're something special or someone special, but we are here to advance God's kingdom. Amen? And take it to another, another level. So the key word here is her responsibility, even though you may not be the blame for the things that may be going on in your home, you have to take responsibility for those. Come on, men. It's not easy being married. Let's talk to these single guys. It's not easy being married. I know you desire it, but I'm telling you it's not easy because there's a responsibility. And that responsibility sometimes is outside your own will of what you would want done in your life. There is something outside of your own will, but you still have to take responsibility for that. Think about it. God has placed me as the head of the church. And I have a responsibility of hundreds of people who are doing whatever they want to do. Think about it just for a quick second. That there's still a responsibility on my part as the head to speak to those things and, and deal with those things and, and pray with those things and, and help those things that are going on. There's a responsibility. So we have to understand, men, in our marriages, we have a responsibility regardless how chaotic a situation may be. And that comes through God speaking to us to help us to deal with the things that we're going through or the things that are out of order in our lives. We must seek God. We've got to stop letting our wives seek God for us. It is time for us to get back to what God has called us to come in the right relationship in that garden and begin to take responsibility for the things because it is our job to provide and to protect. It is our job to provide and protect our wives. It is our job to make sure that they're provided for and protected from the things of this world or the, the things that may come after. So when you're in headship and you work as a kingdom husband, you demonstrate headship. Amen? When you work as a kingdom husband, you begin to demonstrate headship. When you start to live this way out, then you begin to see what true headship is about. You begin to see what true submission is in marriages. And that's what a good marriage is. Not because they're driving around in fancy cars. 
A good marriage is that a husband who loves his wife and a wife who loves him. And you can see the submission in their lives together when they're walking life out together. You see joy in their heart. Not that everything's perfect, but they're, but they're willing to work things out together. They're willing to be helpers to each other. Allowing him to get time to get with God to see what this family needs to do to get right in order. But we begin to see these things when we have a kingdom mindset, when we have a responsibility. We exercise a headship in the responsibility in the context of love. So scripture tells us in verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. This could be a scary one right here, guys. What did Jesus do for the church? He died for it. And some of us men in our marriages, we're going to have to die. Ooh. This is scary. Yes, yes. I hate preaching this stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to define love in a way, because basically we define it as an emotion. Love is not an emotion. Because it's something greater than an emotion. But we define it by that. I love cake. I love this. I love my car. I love vacation. But that's not what love is. Biblical definition is passionately, righteously, and sacrificially pursuing the well-being of others. That's why God loves you. Because God is passionately, righteously, and sacrificially pursuing the well-being of your life. That's why God loves you. Not because he can bring you something nice in your life. Because he wants the best for you. And when you say you love me, you want the best for me. If you really care about me and love me, you'll make sure the best is happening for me. Not just getting me stuff to pacify me. But you're doing things because you love me. And you're righteously doing it. So sometimes in, in marriages we come in opposition with each other because we want, one wants to do this. And the other saying, we can't do that. We got to do this. No, 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 do this. And we whine and we complain and we, we bicker and we stomp our feet and we kick until we get what we want. And all we've done is pacify the flesh of the emotion and we did, haven't done the righteousness of God. And so we have not done the marriage any good when we live outside of what we should be doing in the relationship. Is that the way we're doing this right now, making this budget that I hate, is going to be better for us. It's going to help us stay in line and have the finances we need. It's going to help us stay in line and put the things, these are going to be the better things for our life overall for our what? Well-being. Because again, if a husband is connected with God, you know he has your best interest in mind. If you have a godly man, you know he has the best interest for your family. Even if, no, it may not be going the way you want it to go, it's the best interest. Because why? He's connected with God. And so if we submit to that, it brings powerful change, amen, into our life. So we need to fulfill the text by loving. And Christ loved us. He loved us to death. And we need to also know that Christ was what? The Savior. He was the deliverer from what? From sin. Jesus came into my life as my Savior to deliver me from my sin. And husbands, it is our job, it is our calling in our lives, in our relationship, to help deliver our wives from some of the sinful behaviors of their life. And, and believe me, Jesus didn't like the sin you were in either. Jesus didn't like the stuff you were doing. And I know you don't like the stuff that your wife is doing. But I'm telling you that God's called you in a responsibility to love her in such a way that will bring the sin out of her. Because I have found when God had loved me, he was able to bring the sin out of me and bring the righteousness of God into my life that I would live in the fruitfulness and the holiness of God. Are you following me this morning? So I must take a different view at this love that God has for me and the call that he has on my life. So he calls me to save my wife. He calls me to the saving place in my life so that I can issue life to her over the sin that she may be living in or through in my family. And because of that, God's dealing with me on what? My sin. As the head, I take responsibility dealing with my sin, and I'm, I'm transferring that into my family, into my wife, to help her with her sin. 
washing her like Christ is washing me, and then we can do that to our children. Are you following me? You getting it? All right, we just, we're going to wrap this thing up right here. We're going to wrap it up. So wives have this responsibility, and we have this responsibility to deliver this into our lives. So verses 26 and 27, as we wrap this thing up. Whew. Oh, my God. Yes. Ephesians 5. Ooh, I got to get there. I got it right there. Verses 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the, the word. Get this. He washes her. He sanctifies her through the word of God. There is nothing that is better than any scrubby bubbles that you've ever seen. OxyClean doesn't have the power that the Word of God has. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know the sense of sweet from Victoria's Secret, Secret, but there's nothing sweeter than the washing of God's Word. Yeah, I, I know there's a few people that understand me right? because, because we, we try to use other things to correct. But the Word of God here is, is, is something that is so powerful by the washing of water of the Word that the Spirit of God connected with the Word of God can get down deep and clean into anyone's life to begin to change them radically for the things of God. So he says, wash them in the Word. Let's go on to 27. That he might present her to himself a glorious church. Oh, my God. This is some good scripture right here. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. There is nothing greater in my life than I want to do as a man and as a husband is to let my wife be glorified. That I got the sweetest thing in town, the best thing in town. That my wife is lifted up in my words in front of other people in town. That I wouldn't put her down. I wouldn't talk about her. I wouldn't say things about my wife. But I would glorify her. That she would be glorified before God and before men. And men, we need to understand this. That we need to sanctify our wives. Stop looking at their imperfections. And get the word up in them and wash them. So that they can begin to understand and identify who they are in Christ. So that they can live in the holiness and the righteousness and the fullness of God. There's nothing greater than a woman who walks with her head out high. There's nothing greater than a woman who has confidence. And some of you men, because you advocated that, you're afraid of a woman's confidence. I'm not. Oh, now, now, baby, you can go do that. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, I got you. Me and you, we, we got you, baby. Go for it. Because there's a confidence in our relationship by allowing the word to bring changes in our life. I know who I am in Christ. And because I can identify who I am, I'm not trying to find it in my wife. I'm not trying to find it in anyone else. All I'm going to do is teach my wife how to be confident in who she is in God. I wash it with the word. Because it was the word that told me who I was. And so I bring the word to her. Let the word let you know who you are. And then we can do that to our children. Beautiful children, awesome children, blessed children, highly favored children. And then I, I know my children one day will begin to speak that to their children. So, man, we have to have this responsibility of washing our wives in the word. And because we're washing in the word and bringing the sanctification. Sanctification is to set something or someone apart which is unique or special. God says, sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart because you're unique and you're special. God says, you're not like them. You're unique and special. Set yourself apart from that. I have something more for you. Set yourself apart for that. And men, if we look at our wives as being special like that, we must set them apart. We cannot use them to compare them with anyone else because it's so unique. It's so special. My, my wife has a set of dishes they're unique. They're special. They are set apart from the regular things that we battle around all day long. But when there are times and moments in our life, she brings out the unique, special stuff that has been set apart. And she will display that on the table for all of us to sit down as a family and, and experience the uniqueness and the specialty 
of that which is before us. And I don't know, I, I know that was part of family back in the day. They had that unique china cabinet. wasn't used, but it was set apart for something special. And we have to understand, man, that our wives are those that are special to us, must be set apart, and we must understand that. We must get it down in our spirit, regardless of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. So the purpose of all of this is so that we can live and be in a place that is transformational in the love of God in our life. We must like, let sanctification happen. We must know that the flaws of our wives, and we need to know in those flaws how to align myself with God to be able to help support them through whatever we're going through. That's what the church is called to do. We help align ourselves with God to help people transform and change their lives. It is important for us today, men, to understand our role in the things of God so that we can live in God's perfect plan and his perfect will for our lives. Jesus today wants to come into our lives. Jesus wants to come into our lives today, and he wants to begin to speak, us, speak to us so that we would take responsibility for our lives. And so often, we miss opportunities when Christ comes to us as the, as the groom looking for a bride. One that would come alongside with him. One that he could speak into their lives and begin to just wash their lives with the word. That's why he calls us to read the word of God so that he could wash us, begin to change the, the things, the, the smears, the marks, the cuts, the bruises of our life. Only God's word has been able to ever touch the places of our lives. God wants to come into your life today. God wants to not just be something you know, not just to know that there are marriages, but he wants you to come into the marriage. God wants to be a part of your life so that you and him can begin to walk together. God wants to begin to radically change your life so that you can change the world. And men, God's called us to that today. Can all the men just stand to their feet today? I want to just pray over you today. All the men, I don't care how young you are, you in this place today, I want you to just stand to your feet. And I just want to release this, I want to release this prayer over you this morning in the presence of God. That today we would take a responsibility for our lives. Even in your singleness, if you're single, it doesn't really matter if you're single or married. But today you would take a, a responsibility in your life of God. That you would begin to examine yourself and you would bring yourself before an awesome and mighty God today. And say, God, what is it? that I need to do. We're talking to all the single men right now. What is it that I need to do in my life to radically change my life? I know I've been running and ripping with other people, but I've got, I got to refocus my life because I, th there is something that I see that I want. One day I want to be married. I want to be a part of that. But I need to align myself properly right now so that I can have that. And I need the Spirit of God. I need to come into relationship with God right now. And so as men standing right now before the presence of God, I just need you to say, God, just help me to align with your word. I need you, O oh Lord, to just come into my life that I align myself with your word, that you begin to change me, Lord. That like as Ephesians said, for the woman, that you would sanctify me and wash me with your word that would begin to change my life. Amen. That God would come into you right now and begin to change it. And for the, for the married men in the house, the husbands in the house, I want you to know right now that you, today it needs to be a day that you need to take responsibility. I know things aren't the way you want them to be, but you have to hit this thing head on with the power and the presence of God. You've got to turn to the Word of God to help you get through whatever it is that you're going through. God says, I have a plan. I have a purpose. It's on you as the head of your home to bring glory to this house. It's up to you to begin to magnify that so I can begin to bless the womb and the, the seed of your life. I want to bless that. I want to build kingdom through you. And I want you to take responsibility. So men, we can't be fussing and cussing anymore. Today we're going to make a decision not to fuss and to cuss, but to turn to the word of God. We're going to make decisions because God has spoken to us. Not because I'm mostly charged about what's going on. I'm going to love like I've never loved before. 
Today's my day to begin to love like God loved and how God loves me. So precious Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bless these men who are standing in this place. I bless the generations, O oh Lord, that are connected to them. I bless, O oh Lord, those, O oh Lord, who will be following them. We are raising up mighty men of God, O oh Lord, in this house. We're raising men, O oh God, who are prepared, men who are ready, men, O oh God, who are, uh, are glorified and magnified in you, men who are submitted to your word. And we just thank you for them, and we bless them. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life, and maybe you're here today and knowing that there's something missing in my life. And I'm here to let you know that if you're missing a relationship with God, you're missing everything. Many of us have walked down the aisle of life. Some of us have been able to come and in a relationship with Jesus in our life to, to live in a marriage that would, would grow and develop. And maybe you're feeling lonely, lost, and single in your life, and maybe you need Jesus in your life this morning. If that's you, we just want to pray for you this morning. Maybe you find yourself just single. You may be even married, but just single than yourself. And you need a relationship. You need to be connected. It, and that's what God's all about, having a connection with him. And maybe that's you this morning. Why don't we just bow our heads for just a quick moment here of just prayer and intercession. Because let the Spirit of the Lord just move in this place this morning for somebody who needs Jesus this morning. Somebody needs Jesus. Somebody needs to be coming to a marriage relationship with God this morning. And I don't know who that is, but God wants to just connect with you this morning because he loves you. And if that's you this morning, if you find yourself in a place of singleness and without God in your life, and God just wants to connect with you, he wants to empower you, he wants to give you kingdom authority and dominion. Maybe you felt weak and powerless in your life. Jesus wants to come into your life and give you strength today. If that's you, just, just lift your hand right where you are in your, in your chair. There's nothing big. There's just something between you and God. And if you want to bring change into your life and you want to bring this authority and this love and this new life, a new day, it can only be found in Jesus. It's important to understand that men, when we are called to fulfill the plan of God, how we live out everything that God has for us in our life and bringing our family into right position. It is important for us men to lead our families into the fullness of what God has for you. Thank you for joining us today for Living in the Word. Come back again and begin to see what God has for your life.